Hi everyone, happy Friday. It's going to be a great weekend and I'm so excited. You know, it's kind of warming up out, so that's an awesome thing. So today we're gonna talk about what we're, we're labeling as the quarantine 15. So we're kind of just making a joke out of it, kind of like you would with, you know, if you were to go off to college and have the freshman 15, that sort of thing. Um, so just a little play with words there. But we're gonna just talk about um, some things like how to maintain your healthy weight while you know you're locked in your house and what to do diet wise for weight loss to keep up your energy those sort of things okay so as always you know what we want to do and what our goal here is to provide um, our bodies with whole nutritious uh, nutrient dense food so that doesn't change necessarily um, those recommendations when you're trying to lose weight um, there's just a few particular things that you could do to kind of aid in that process so today what I'm gonna do is I'll go over um, go over those nutrient-dense foods that you should make sure you're including and then also what I'll do is I'll go through some things that you should be avoiding and maybe some other things that you can implement so when we look at our diet and we look at nutrient-dense foods in particular, um, you know if you've been here or watched the seminar, you want to focus on, first and foremost, high quality protein and high quality fat, okay? So what I mean by that is you want to get your sources of protein from a good source, first of all. So anything that you can get that is um, locally grown, um, that you know where it's coming from, you know what the animal is being fed, all of that, those are great things to know. Um, you want to get it um, a source of protein that's actually a little higher in fat than it is um, more so lean. I know we kind of all grow up, um, you know, oh, when you go to the grocery store, make sure you get uh, like 94% lean and 6% fat. Um, even though that might come from a high quality source, we still want to focus on getting more like the 80% lean, 20% fat sort of deal. So when you're looking at um, sources of meat like that, we're looking at things like ground beef, um, you're looking at things like lamb, that sort of thing that are higher in your good essential fatty acids and also still high in good protein. So protein is really important for losing weight because in particular, protein is used to heal the body, heal the cells, and if we're not healing, then in a way we're almost breaking down and we're unable, our body's unable to focus on weight loss per se. When your body is concerned about other things going on and other parts of the body not healing and not doing what they're supposed to be doing, your body's not necessarily worried about okay, you know, I have those five pounds I need to lose. It's, it's more, it's that's pretty low on the priority list. So we wanna make sure we're getting enough protein in so our body's healing in the right way. And then once we start healing properly, that's something our body can focus on. And then along with that, if you're eating better and you're eating high protein, you're gonna be eating um, a lower carbohydrate diet, which is something we wanna focus on when you are trying to lose weight. And we'll get to that. So we'll start with, you know, good sources of, lean proteins so or sorry quality proteins <laughs> kind of put my foot in my mouth there so good sources of quality proteins so we have things like eggs so eggs are a great quality source of protein and especially starting off um, breakfast in the morning uh, you want to have a good amount of protein at your breakfast okay so when you're looking to uh, make a good breakfast you want things like eggs uh, high quality of sausage, high quality bacon, those are really great sources of protein. The brain in particular is going to run off of good protein and good fat right away in the morning. So you want to make sure that um, you're getting that to your brain so that you can function, you can have good energy, you can have high energy, and chronically speaking, Hi Denise. Um, chronically speaking, when we look at patients with long-term fatigue, um, their body is really just needing that healing, needing that nutrition, um, because it's it's really just begging for it at that point when you have chronic fatigue. So what you want to do is provide your body and your brain with that good source of protein right in the morning. So you could do things like. Um, eggs and you can there's so many ways you, you can eat eggs you know you can eat them scrambled you can eat them over easy you can eat them poached you can make uh, like little egg muffins that is a really good meal prep idea so you could take 
um, eggs and take muffin tins um, and then you can whisk them up and you can throw in some vegetables in there you can throw some sausage you can throw some bacon and you bake those in the oven and then let's per se you have a tin of 12 cupcake holders then you have 12 like egg bites ready to go for the week um, and that's all prepped out for you you don't have to worry about okay in the morning what am I having for breakfast that sort of thing it's really convenient um, then you want to look at things like what are you snacking on at home so I know our our minds can kind of get a little bit sidetracked when we're just sitting at home all day so what you want to do is you want to focus on keeping good food in the house because if we're going out less and we're eating out less then what we're left with is what we have at home so a good thing to do is honestly just don't buy the bad food that you would be tempted to eat because it's not there you're not going to eat it and you can always replace that food with um, better options too so you know if you're craving something like chocolate or cake or cookies or that sort of thing um, if you know that you'll eventually want them and you want to get them you can always opt for a better or higher quality product um, that's an option as well too um, it's still more than likely the higher quality products are still going to contain some things in them that may um, not be beneficial for weight loss but you're heading a step in the right direction when you have you know a more nutrient dense dark chocolate bar versus when you were eating you know the dove chocolates or something like that that may have a little bit more sugar a little more preservatives a little more additives okay so you want to focus on making sure you're providing yourself with good food in your home and i know it can be a little hard right now with the grocery stores um kind of being pick and choose so just when you get to the store get as, as much of what you can for your family and for yourself um and work with what you're able to do a patient of mine actually just mentioned a website that I think uh, would be really helpful. I believe, don't quote me, it should come up if you Google it though, I believe it's called like All Recipes and she said that you're able to go online and you put in the things you have on, at home, you put in those ingredients and then it basically just spits out a bunch of recipes at you. So whatever you have at home like if you have you know ground beef these spices and these vegetables then you put that into the into the recipe thing and it might be able to give you like five to ten options for what you can do with that food so that's a really good option to have at hand when you're looking for variety in your diet during um, quarantine because we are eating at home a lot more than possibly per se you were before um, some high quality fat sources since we kind of talked on protein um, and to reiterate on protein a little bit too, I'll go off of that actually a little more. So you want, um, you know, your beefs, fish. Fish is really great, um, especially with the essential fatty acids that are in fish. Um, that's super important. So uh, fish oil is great for your brain. Um, it's good for high blood pressure. It's good for heart health. Um, all of those things are really important um, that you get from fish oil. Um, you want to make sure that your fish is from a wild caught source and not from a farm raised source, okay? So again, wild caught fish, that includes things like scallops, shrimp, all of that um, would fall under that category because you wanna make sure that there's no antibiotics, dyes, preservatives added to them. You want to make sure you're getting them from a good source. Um, along those lines too, I talked about pork products. Uh, if you're going to be eating sausage and bacon, you need to make sure that you're getting that um, as a high quality source as well, which includes no nitrates and no added sugars. Um, you could do, you could even opt for things like some selected lunch meats are okay. Uh, a couple, a good brand I know about is called Applegate. So Applegate's a good brand. They don't put any nitrates or anything like that in their meat. Um, it's going to be a higher quality deli meat because that's okay to use um, and take advantage of because it is easy. Um, and you can always do like a little lettuce wrap or something with that to keep it on the lower carbohydrate end. So that is high quality proteins. Um, when it comes to fats, um, again, like I said, you kind of mix your high quality fats and proteins when you um, are eating animal byproducts. So like eggs have really, really good fat in them, really good cholesterol, 
um, and then good sources of vitamins too. So you want to make sure you're getting um, in those good sources of protein because it kind of is like a two for one with that. Um, when you're cooking, you can use cooking oils to cook with. Um, those would include, you know, things like coconut oil, olive oil. With olive oil, I would actually stick with just putting that on your salads if possible. Um, olive oil, when it gets heated to a certain temperature, it changes a little bit and it doesn't make it as easy for our body to digest and break down. So you might want to stick to keeping that more as putting it on a salad type of thing versus um, heating up, putting it in the oven or the stovetop. Um, grass-fed butter. So grass-fed butter is a great option. Um, you want to make sure that you're um, getting that from a good source. Again, grass-fed cows, is, in, is it, it's important to get that butter from them because um, for a couple of different reasons. So when cows eat grain feed, um, what they're doing is, you know, they're eating it and then in return you're eating them so you're getting some of that 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 grain um, in return what we want is we want them to be eating the grass because the grass in particular makes way better quality meat and um, milk so butter and you're getting more of your essential fatty acids from uh, grass-fed cows versus grain-fed cows so that's super important when you're buying your meat when you're buying your butter all of that is, is good to know. Um, you could do, if you feel like you have a sensitivity with dairy or with butter at all, you could do a good source of ghee is a good option. So it kind of takes the, the the milk factor out of that um, and you could do it that way. Um, personally, I don't see a huge issue unless you have a very, very high dairy sensitivity. Um, for my dad, for example, can't eat dairy and he eats a lot of grass fed butter and he does just fine um, because it is such a high quality source. And when you're making butter, the particular protein that kind of dis disturbs a lot of people when it comes to dairy isn't in the butter. So you should be okay there. Okay. And then when it comes to um, eating those things, in return, you're not going to be eating as many high carbohydrate foods, high sugar foods. So when we're talking about losing weight and keeping weight off, you want to be avoiding sugar. So added sugars, um, minimizing your fruit sugar intake, keeping it at a low, um, but added sugars in particular are horrible for the body. Um, they basically zap you of all your good nutrients. So all the good things you're doing for your body um, in return, they're kind of getting zapped out by the, the bad sugar you're eating. So what you want to do is avoid sugars, okay? Then secondly, you want to reduce your overall carbohydrate intake. So what we know to be true about carbs is that carbs are inflammatory and they can be immune suppressant. And what I'm when I say carbohydrates, I'm talking about um, very dense carbohydrate sources. So like grains, um, wheats, that sort of thing. Starches can be something that can be a little bit bothersome. Um, and so you want to work on bringing those down. If you want to really kind of track those um, carbohydrates that you are eating, you could download an app like um, MyFitnessPal or something like that. Or you could write on your food log, um, write out those sources of carbs you're eating, and then look them up and see how many grams of carbs are in that particular source. So when you're tracking those, what you want to do is you want to have a goal. So what I would do at first is, you know, kind of play a little game with it. Go on normally, um, you know, how you normally would eat. And let's say you're eating, you know, uh, 130 grams of carbs a day. So that's your average day. You kind of do a, a week worth of food and you find that 130 grams of carbs is your average. And you're looking to have some, or to have weight loss. So what you want to do is you want to focus on reducing that number. Um, there's a kind of a happy medium for everyone. In particular, personally, I find that my happy medium is like about 80 grams of carbs a day. Um, if I'm looking to, to lose weight and to, um, 
maintain a healthy weight for myself. Everyone's different. Um, that's why it is important, you know, if you, the, a goal of yours is to lose weight, express that to your practitioner, let them know what's going on, and then that way you can work on it together. Because um, there are also some things that can sneak in your diet that may be um, disturbing your gut so you're unable to lose weight as easily as you would want to. Um, so keeping those carbohydrates lower is important. We don't say eliminate because things like vegetables are technically a carbohydrate um, and we don't want to eliminate vegetables. So we just want to look at the source where we're getting them and we want to look at how many grams within that particular source. So like, you know, a cup of broccoli versus two slices of bread. Okay, obviously your two slices of bread is gonna have a lot more carbs in it versus the cup of broccoli, and you're gonna get a lot more nutrients from that cup of broccoli versus the two slices of bread. And when it comes to that sort of thing, I know, um, you know, bread and pastas and whatnot are um, some staple in some people's diets, but what we provide here is the tools for you to be able to swap those out easily and we can provide resources to let you know, okay, hey, maybe you try this instead of that. Um, and, and that's all something that we can provide for patients who are looking to, to swap things out. Okay, so like I said, we'll recap right here in the middle. So high protein, high quality fat, then lowering that carbohydrate intake and then also reducing eliminating if possible your sugar intake um, because that is important to do when it comes to weight loss sugar makes us store fat sugar must, makes us gain fat we want to make sure that you're reducing eliminating that to keep your weight at a healthy um, number like you would like it to be okay next we'll talk about water intake. So water intake is super important um, for general health, but particularly when you're trying to lose weight because what I see kind of go hand in hand, if you're working on weight loss and you're working on keeping a healthy weight, you're probably doing some sort of movement, whether that's walking or yoga or exercise or weightlifting, any of those things, you're probably incorporating into your daily routine. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're replenishing your water intake and you're staying hydrated. Um, if you're not staying hydrated, your body's kind of always in this like, like f um, flight or fight kind of state and it's like, okay, I have to hold on to this water because who knows when the next time I'm gonna get it is going to be. So you wanna make sure that you're um, staying hydrated and that you're keeping up with your water intake because or else your body's just gonna hold on to water weight and also, you need to make sure you're replenishing your cells um, in, um, with water and you want to keep them nice and healthy so that your body stays healthy in general. <laughs> Next, we already kind of talked about it, but um, exercise. So exercise is super important when you're incorporating a weight loss routine or um, looking to maintain a healthy weight. So exercise can range and it can vary from individual to individual. So I'll kind of cover some basis here. Um, in my, my background in particular, um, my undergraduate degree is in exercise science. So, um, I love talking about moving and staying fit and all of that. It's, it's really important to me and it's important that my clients know how to do so with their bodies. So everyone's, you know, at a different level. So it doesn't matter if you're 85 and you may have had a hip replacement or something, or if you're 16 and you're, you know, super spry and in your prime. Um, you know, you need to be moving either end of the spectrum. So what you want to do is pick a routine that's right for you um, and that suits you and your lifestyle. So that could be that three days a week you're going to work on walking a half a mile and that's your goal at first and that's okay. When you're setting up a workout goal, I wouldn't, um, don't put so much pressure on ourselves. We tend to really put a lot of pressure on ourselves um, as human beings to be like, Okay, I need to work out five times this week, and if I don't, I'm a major disappointment. Okay, cut it out. Throw that throw that idea out the window. Because moving, period, any day, any time of the week is an accomplishment. So, you know, set yourself up for a, a successful goal. Say, okay, you know, this week I'm going to go for a walk three times, and, you know, if it happens, it happens, and that's my goal. And if it doesn't, we're gonna, we're gonna work on it next week. So 
um, something called low intensity steady state exercise, which um, a lot of people call LIS, um, is a great way to get your metabolism going. So if you're just starting out with moving your body and working out and doing that sort of thing, you can start out with some LIS exercise. So that would include things like walking, um, even things, not you know, we can't do them right now, unfortunately, <laughs> but like if you were at a rec center and did some light swimming or on a bike or anything like that, you're gonna be doing more of a low intensity steady state. So when you do that sort of exercise, what really revs up your metabolism and gets it going is when you do that sort of exercise for more of an extended period of time. So for example, if you're gonna be doing a walk, let's say your goal at first, you know, if you're not walking at all, make your goal like even 10 minutes, a uh, 10 minute walk is gonna be um, better than doing nothing. But then eventually you wanna be like, okay, I have this 30 minute to an hour period where I'm gonna to commit to just going for a walk. Um, also, it's really important and healthy for the body to step outside, get some fresh air. Um, all of that is really important for your immune system and keeping your body well in general. Um, so you wanna tap into that low intensity steady state exercise. If you're just starting out, that's a great place to start. Or um, honestly, I go for walks all the time. It's so relaxing. Um, go with a friend, chit chat, and you'll be like walking four miles before you even know it. So start with that. Um, if you want to do a little bit more challenging of a walk, you could go hiking. So hiking is a great option and it puts you outside again in the sunshine, the fresh air. Well, if Michigan would ever give us the sunshine <laughs> instead of snow. Um, but I think warmer days are coming. So hopefully we'll be able to do more of that. Um, but get outside, get your fresh air, um, go on a hike. It's a little bit more of a rough terrain, maybe some hills, that sort of thing. Um, boost up your cardiovascular um, endurance. And then the next thing you can know is maybe you're going for a jog instead of a walk or you're doing like a walk-jog combo. So that's really great for boosting your metabolism, revving that up, um, and then set yourself up for a success, successful goal, okay? Um, if you want to do something like high intensity interval training, which would be more, um, you know, quick bursts of hard work with a little bit of rest, quick bursts of hard work with a little bit of rest, that's a great idea for weight loss too. Um, and you can do body weight uh, exercises of that at home, which is really convenient to be able to do. Um, another thing that I love to do for exercise and to keep my stress level down is I like to practice yoga. Um, I think that Shannon's mentioned it before on a video. I'll just reiterate. There's a yoga app I really like that's called Down Dog. Um, it's super helpful to customize it so you can make it like basically whatever practice you want to have, you can make it that way. So you could go ahead and put in like you only want to do yoga for 10 minutes, that's fine. You want to do it for an hour and a half, they have that option too. Anything in between. Um, you can start at beginner, intermediate, advanced, work your way through there. Um, you can decide one day, you know, if your low back's really hurting or something, there's an option to put like a low back opener on there or anything along those lines, okay? So those are some good workout options. And when it comes to things like yoga, breathing, meditation, that sort of thing, um, what those techniques do is they also reduce your stress naturally. And so keeping your stress level down is gonna be really important for making sure your, your weight stays at a, a healthy weight. Stress in particular produces a hormone called cortisol. And cortisol, um, there's a good purpose for it. And when it hangs around too long, it can be detrimental to our health. So what you wanna do is focus on keeping your stress down and you want to um, keep that cortisol level production down as well because what happens is when we produce cortisol, the body stores and hangs on to fat because again, it's in that fight or flight type of mode. It's not necessarily worried about, um, oh, you have those 10 pounds you need to lose. Well, I feel like I'm getting like chased down by a bear right now. I don't care about that. So we wanna make sure we keep our stress levels down as minimum as we can. I know it's a stressful time, um, but we're here to help you reduce the overall stress and um, help you feel as best as you can. Then we want to make sure you're getting plenty of good sleep, okay? So making sure you're going to bed at a decent time, 
that you're waking up at a decent time. A big part of um, being in quarantine and staying sane and then also not snacking and eating too much food, that sort of thing, is staying on a schedule. So you want to make sure your sleep schedule in particular is where you want it. Now's the perfect opportunity to work on it because you do have possibly have the time to do so. So getting up at the same time, going to bed at the same time, that sort of routine can really implement a good sleep routine and good sleep hygiene. So you wanna make sure you know your bedtime is appropriate, your awake time is appropriate. Um, before bed, you can create a before bed routine and you could do things like, you know, take a relaxing bath, take a hot shower, make sure your TV is off um, an hour before you're going to sleep. Try to put, this is a big one, I know. I personally am bad at it too. Try to put your phone down at least an hour before you're trying to go to bed because that light that comes off of your phone can really affect your sleep. Um, and thanks, thanks Colette. Um, and so that really can affect your sleep if you're on your technology before bed. So versus being on your phone, maybe pick up a book um, and you know, figure out, okay, this is my routine before I go to sleep. You could diffuse some lavender essential oil in your room. Um, that's a really great relaxing oil to have at home. Uh, it's one of our favorites because it reduces stress, reduces anxiety. Um, so in particular, lavender really is good at calming the body down calming the nervous system down um, you could also do an oil like stress away so stress away is a really good oil to diffuse um, you could do some magnesium oil at night and incorporate that into your routine so magnesium is a relaxing mineral um, and minerals are essential for us to actually get good sleep let our nervous system rest at night and kind of decompose so you can get some um, magnesium oil we have some here it's really high quality um, and you put that particularly you can put it on the bottom of your feet because it soaks into your bloodstream pretty well there or you can put it anywhere you're possibly having sore muscles or anything like that um, but that's really good for high quality sleep to implement some magnesium oil okay good we talked about keeping your stress level down um, we've talked about sleep oh talk about let's talk about kind of we were talking about minerals a second ago let's talk about getting um, good healthy salt into your diet so good healthy salt is important because it's high in minerals and also you want to um, get it in for um, adrenal function energy all those things are really important for um, your body and you can get that from healthy salt so why I keep saying healthy salt is because you know we have this really bad stigma around salt that it's bad for us um, it raises our blood pressure it causes these heart diseases blah 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 so on and on those things can be true when it comes to things like morton iodized salt okay so white bleached chemicalized salt yes that can definitely happen when you are consuming that. Um, you can see things like heart related and blood pressure, blood pressure issues. So you want to swap that out with a healthy salt like Celtic sea salt, pink Himalayan salt, that sort of thing. Um, in particular, we like Celtic sea salt the best because it does have a higher mineral content than pink Himalayan salt, um, but it is really important to get those minerals in um, because or else a lot of things can go wrong. And like I said, adrenal function is one of those and our adrenals are what we consider our stress glands. Um, so you wanna make sure those are functioning the right way um, because we wanna keep that stress low so that we can keep that cortisol low and keep our weight loss at optimum. So healthy salt is important, whether you're putting it on your food, um, putting it in water and taking a shot of it that way, that's really great. All right, so now that we kind of talked about the, uh, you know, tips and tricks, hi Cole, um, of food wise, what you can do, what you can't do, let's talk about some things that you can do with your food besides carbohydrate counting. Um, you can do something that's called intermittent fasting. Um, I don't know if, I'm sure some people have heard that term kind of bounced around, but what intermittent fasting is and what it does is it gives your digestive system and your body a chance to actually relax and digest the food that you have consumed. So the window for intermittent, intermittent fasting is an eight hour eating window versus a 16 hour rest window. 
So let's just say, for example, we'll make it easy. Let's just say each day you eat from noon to 8 p.m., okay? And you choose to eat during that time, you're still going to consume the same amount of food, ideally, that you would if it was outside of those hours. So if you're eating, you know, three square meals a day and a couple of snacks, you wanna ideally still consume that within the eight hours. And the other 16 hours, you're letting your body fast or letting your body rest. And you're um, just doing things like drinking water. Um, I know some teas I think are acceptable um, as long as they're not caffeinated. Um, and you can do that during that period. So you're basically giving your body a chance to decompose, to relax and rest. Um, when talking to clients about weight loss, this is something we definitely mention. It doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So, you know, we all know there's no cookie cutter thing out there for weight loss and for everyone to do, but this is something that is worth trying and can be helpful to do. So when you're doing this, you're giving the digestive system a break. You're giving a chance to get more regular, to catch up. Um, this in particular can help with people who possibly struggle with like irregular bowel movements or issues there because it um, helps get your colon almost like on a schedule. So it's used to, okay, I these are the hours I'm working, these are the hours I'm resting. Because just like us as humans, our organs within our body need rest during the day as well, or during some time as well. And if, you know, we're not getting high quality sleep and resting at night, um, then our body really never is truly at rest. So doing intermittent fasting helps those intestines actually rest, do their job correctly, dispose of things that, that the body doesn't need, um, and then in return, you can lose weight or maintain a healthy weight. Um, I've personally done intermittent fasting and it's been successful. Um, I don't, I am really, I don't necessarily do it um, long term. It works for me short term when I kind of want to just jump start things a little bit. Um, I know Dr. Shannon has participated in it and it works great for her. Um, if you have questions about it, please feel free to ask us, email um, or call the office and let us know. We can work with you or on your next nutrition visit. Um, just bring it up and we'll talk about it and uh, see if it's a good fit for you. We also have a couple of supplements in the office that can help with uh, weight loss in particular, you know, help on working on the metabolism. They don't do all the work. There's no magic pill, um, so you have to do most of the work. But there are things we can do to help and aid and assist um, in the process of losing weight or maintaining a healthy weight. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, it just came to my mind, when it comes to sources of protein, um, another good option or a good thing to do is to implement protein shakes or things like that. So it's, you know, getting enough protein can sometimes be a task. I'll even say that for myself and you know, I'm the, the expert and sometimes stay, some days I'm like, oh my gosh, I still need to eat more protein. I'm kind of lacking. Um, so having the option for a protein shake or a smoothie is a really good option to have. Um, in particular, we sell very high quality proteins here and um, I like them a lot because, especially the standard process one, standard process is like amazing. Um, supplements, protein, all of it. Uh, but the standard processed protein has actually, it has like sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, alfalfa, buckwheat, those sort of things in it. So it doesn't just have the, you know, the whey protein. It's much more nutrient dense than if you were to go to GNC and get some probably not high quality protein off the shelf there. So it's really great for smoothies. Um, hey, it's not my favorite to drink by itself. I won't lie because it has those things in it. It's a little gritty, but if you can do it, props to you. Um, we also have a, the brand Primal Kitchen. We carry their whey protein, which isn't as bad. Um, I like that one. It's There's a chocolate, it's pretty good. Um, Actually, I'll take the chocolate collagen that Primal Kitchen has and I will make like a fat coffee with it. And a fat coffee is just, I do um, collagen, butter, coconut oil, my coffee, blend it in a blender. Delicious. Um, keeps me full. That's like my breakfast some days. Keeps me full till lunchtime. Um, and my brain and everything is working really well from all the essential fatty acids in the, from the butter and the coconut oil. Um, 
collagen in particular. I know that, let's see, someone had mentioned in the comments earlier um, when we were talking about um, what topic we want to talk about today. They had said something about, you know, joint stiffness and whatnot. So collagen in particular is good for healing joints, ligaments. It's great for your hair, skin, nails, um, ladies who struggle with things like that. It's really great at strengthening your nails. See a huge difference when I'm taking it versus when I'm not taking it. Um, and it's really good for, for skin. Um, and it's good for things like hair loss and whatnot. Uh, so you want to focus on getting that good protein, which can be from a collagen source, which is a powder, or um, getting a protein powder. And you can do that, like I said, in a smoothie or by itself. Okay, and then I think that that's it as far as weight loss stuff. Um, you know, as far as being quarantined at home, we just wanna encourage everyone to stay as much as you can into your daily routine. Um, you know it's hard, it's not easy. And so we're here to support you physically, mentally, um, anything you guys need. Uh, make sure you're going outside, you're moving. Honestly, even if you just go outside and sit in the sunshine once in a while, that'll help um, keep your stress level down. Try to brighten your mood a little bit. Um, participate in things other than, you know, staring at the TV or playing game, video games, that sort of thing. Uh, try to keep your mind active um, and try to keep your mind healthy. Um, and then, let's see, I will address a couple of other questions we had uh, when we posted that adorable picture of Sophia <laughs> and wanted you guys feedback on what we should talk about today. Um, I'm just going to answer those questions that were kind of in the comments that we didn't necessarily cover in this topic, but I'll still address them. Okay, so we had a question, um, the best way to build your immunity. So obviously a great question during this time. Um, I think that um, Dr. Shannon did a video of, at the beginning of all this. Um, so if you guys want to head back to probably mid-March, find our video on that, she covered you know, how to keep your immune system strong, how to keep your body well during this time, um, and a few things you know you can do that I can just ring off the bat right now is you know doing all the things above that we mentioned, even though they're um, in particular we're talking about weight loss you're going to keep your body well if you're eating the right things, period. So um, keeping your body on track with your diet, um, coming in, getting checked, making sure you're staying on a maintenance program if you're there. Um, if you're looking into becoming a new patient or you're a newer patient of ours, just staying on track with your visits, um, making sure you're taking your supplements on time, um, getting those in daily uh, is very important for keeping your immunity up. In particular, vitamins like A, C, and D are really important in keeping your immunity up. And we are um, offering those outside of, you know, whatever your regular program is. If you wanted to add vitamin A, C, or D, we can give you our recommendation um, and what we think would be best. Um, on top of that, what else you want to do is um, make sure you're keeping your stress down, getting good sleep, um, and getting enough water in, okay? So I know it's a lot of reiterating, but... That is truly how you keep the body well and how um, you keep it at optimum function. Because if we continue to give the body the tools it needs to work the way it should, it's going to protect us and it's going to keep us well. All right, let's see. And I kind of mentioned the um, stiffness and achy joints question. Um, like I said, collagen is a good um, thing to do with that. Staying hydrated, um, making sure you're keeping the sugars and the carbohydrates at a lower level is really important because they do cause inflammation. Inflammation does cause disease. It does cause things like stiffy, st stiffy, <laughs> stiff joints and um, achy joints. Okay. All right. And then we had a question about safe vitamins and um, minerals and whatnot for children and adults. So uh, all the things that we're going to be recommending here are going to be, uh, I shouldn't say that they are all 100% are safe for children children and adults, but um, they're, they're whole food supplements and they're made from high quality sources of food. So standard process is a... Um, 
big line that we carry so they have whole food supplements and they have herb herbal supplements and we recommend those specific supplements based off what every individual body needs so the best way to know what your body needs and um, what you're lacking is to come in and get tested and get on a program so that we can provide you with the things that work best for you um, those par products in particular whole food supplements are safe because they're made out of food <laughs> so when it comes to things like um you know there's controversy over supplementation and things like that um and i understand where those views are coming from when you're buying your supplements from the vitamin shop or something like that a lot of those vitamins tend to be synthetic um and not good for our bodies and our body sees them as a foreign thing so what you want to do is you want to focus on getting those whole food supplementation whole food sources of vitamins um in those in particular are things like standard process um, we have, like I said, herbal supplements, like a many herb collection that we have, um, systemic, all those brands are really good, high quality brands. We would not put any, um, put any of our patients on something that we thought was unsafe or not good for them. Um, we want to provide the best support that we can and that's done through those whole food supplements. Okay. Then... Okay, we had a question about easy foods to feed a nine month old. So when it comes to babies, when they start eating real food, you want to be giving, you know, the, the baby the food you're eating and keeping, or eating to keep your body well, they can eat as well. So when it comes to that, you want to be looking at purees, things like that, when they're obviously not able to chew yet or have larger pieces of food. So when you're looking at purees, we're looking at things like vegetables, sweet potatoes, meats, egg yolks. Those are all really good sources of um, high quality nutrients to give to a baby. Um, obviously eating what they can with the texture and everything. Again, you want to keep work on keeping the grains down. So a lot of times um, like rice cereals or, or different things like that are suggested for babies, those really contain little to no nutrient value. So we want to focus on growing the baby's immune system, growing the baby's brain, organs, all of that stuff is really important when they're an infant. And you're going to get that support through whole foods, um, such as vegetables, meats, egg yolks, and sweet potatoes. So those are all really good options um, to puree, mix things up, you know, do a combo of things. Maybe baby likes peas and carrots, but doesn't like just peas. Try it all out um, and see see what, what happens. Okay, awesome. I think that addresses all of our questions that were in the last post. Um, I hope that everyone enjoyed and learned something um, and is doing okay in quarantine. Uh, like I said, we're here for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll try to reply to them or somebody will get to them. Um, if you need anything, please call, let us know. Uh, we are here at regular hours and we're here for supplement pickup. Um, we are doing telehealth appointments. They're going phenomenal. Um, yeah everything's going really good so we're here to support you if you need us okay and then just a quick thing before I sign off um, this coming Monday we're doing a detoxification seminar so that kind of ties really good hand-in-hand hand with this uh, we're going we're gonna kick off our 21 day purification program talk about detoxing talk about why we need to detox um, and why it's important for our bodies and then also I'll reiterate our skincare is still 15% off until next Friday. So if you want to partake in that sale, there's some really great stuff out there for sale. Um, some of my favorites. I love our makeup and whatnot. I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> um, so it has really high quality skincare products, um, skincare routines, makeups, moisturizers, exfoliators, all of the above. Oh, and the lotions and everything are on sale right now, which is nice. Um, you know, sun, sun season's coming up, so we wanna make sure we stay nice and moisturized. All right, and that is about it for today. Thank you guys for coming and listening. Like I said, if you have any extra questions, um, get a hold of us and we would love to answer them. Everyone stay well and have a great weekend.